Hello guys, welcome back to our lectures. In this lecture, we're gonna continue talking about the procedures. So last time we uh, we explored the concept of a leaf procedure, which is a function that doesn't call any other function. Now we're gonna talk about non-leaf procedure, you know, which is basically the opposite. It's a function that can call other functions. Okay. We're gonna see now that we should make some precautions before executing these non-leaf procedures, which is basically storing uh, the original uh, RA register, which contains the uh, you know the address of the return, you know, uh, into the stack before executing this procedure, and then restore back this RA at the end of the procedure. If we didn't do that, you know, our program will be just buggy, will not work correctly. So let's see let's see an example for non-leaf procedure. Here is you know a very straightforward example. We have a C code, I mean function that only contains uh, you know uh, one line, which calls for a function called add four. Add four means add four numbers together. But we're gonna do this uh, addition in two in three steps basically. So first we're gonna add one and two which is basically three, then add in the second step three and four, which is seven. Then we add the three and the seven, which is of course will give us 10. So it's a three step, you know, uh, procedure. And uh, to do that, since we add two numbers at, at a time, we're gonna use the same functions that we used with the, le with the leaf procedure, which is add two, which is a leaf procedure by the way. Okay, so add for function is a function or a procedure that makes a call to another function. So that's basically non-leaf function. Add to here, it's a leaf one. Why? Because there is no calling for other functions. So we're going to add G and H, the first two arguments, which is basically uh, one and two. And add the result in two A, so A should be three. We're going to add then i and j, the third and fourth argument, which is 3 and 4. And of course, the result will be 7. Then we're going to add a and b, you know, and both the result, which is 10 in c. Then we return to c. Okay. One last uh, note here is that x, which is the uh, final value, should be stored in register s0. Okay. Let's see step by step how we should code how we can code this program. Here is the whole program. Okay, we're gonna assume that the, uh, the pointer of a stack is pointing to a location uh, with address one thousand. So, for example, if this is the stack here, this is the current location, location one thousand, and the stack pointer is located to that one. So we shouldn't miss with that. Any other, uh, if we want to store any other uh, value in the stack, we should, you know, decrease the stack pointer by four, as we explained many times before, and the store in the locations below that uh, location number 1000. Okay, so let's start by the main function. So the main function, of course, was just one line there, but here it's more than, of course, one line, because we have four arguments, uh, one, two, three, four. We're gonna pass them to the uh, add four, you know, uh, function. So we're gonna use a zero, a one, a two, a three, as uh, we explained before in the calling convention of MIPS. Uh, so we're gonna store one to a zero, two to a one, three to a two, and four to a three. Which is basically, uh, if we go back to the C function, you know, I is a zero is basically uh, you know I, uh, a one is J now, a two is G, I'm sorry, uh, G, uh, G H and a two is I and a three is J, because G was four. Okay. <laughs> then we're gonna jump and the link to add four. Since we use jump and the link, we should store you know, the return address, which is 20, to RA. Look, RA here is 20. That's very important. And we go 
to at four. The first step in at four line uh, address two hundred is is to uh, decrease SB the stack pointer by four. So uh, SB be, become uh, you know now nine nine six. So it's now pointing to that location. The next free location after one thousand. And we should store, you know, RA, register RA, which now contains 20, which is the return address in the main function, into, you know, this location. So this location will contain 20 now. After that, we can call add 2 to add E0 and E1. Remember, if we look at add2 here, add2 is all the time adding e0 and e1, and that has some implication. And all the time return the value to v0, and that also will have some implication in our coding of add4 as we're gonna see now. So let's call it jump and link add2. What's gonna happen when we do jump and link? We should store in RA the return address, which is now 212. So the 20, which is the original return address in the main function, has been overwritten. And that's why we store it into the stack. Because at the end of the add4 procedure, we need to go back to the main function. So if we didn't store it, you know, it, this value will be lost forever. Because we overwrite it when we do the add4 uh, procedure, non-leave procedure. Okay, so RA now is 2.12. So we go to add 2. In add 2, we're going to add a 0, which is now uh, 1. And a 1, which is now 2. So V0 will be 3. Then we jump register. RA, which is 2.12. So we're going to go to that look, to that line here. In which we, go, we do something weird. We store the V0 into T0. And why is that? Remember, we're going to do the addition in three steps. In each step, we call at 2. And at 2 all the time, both the result in V0. So, if we didn't store the current value, which is 3 of V0, into a register, for example, when we call at 2 again, this, this uh, value will be overwritten. So we need to store it in somewhere. And of course, as again, according to the uh, calling convention that we explored in the previous videos, in MIPS, uh, in MIPS procedure calling, we can use freely uh, the temporary registers T0, T1, T2, until uh, T8. Okay, good. Now T0 has the value 3, which is basically A, by the way. So the first uh, you know uh, thing we did here is we we calculated a the first line in add four procedure which is equal to g and h g and h okay so t zero now contains as a three so t zero contains a which is uh, I'm sorry three which is a basically good now we continue. Now we want to call add 2 again to add uh, i and j, which is a2 and a3. But if we look at add 2, all the time add 2 assumes that the values, the arguments uh, should, or the values should be uh, called by e0 and a1. Although i and j is stored in a2 and a3 now, the 2 and the 3 and the 4. That's why here we should first uh, move uh, a2 to a0 so a0 now will contain 3 then we move a3 into a1 so uh, now a1 will contain uh, 4 then we can call uh, add two again and again when, when we do, when we do jump and link we should store the return address in RA two to eight 
and we go there we add you know uh, a1 which is uh, 4 a0 which is now 3 and v0 will be 7 and here, here is why we did line 212 because we overwrite is a value of v3 which was 3 that's why we stored it first in t0 and we're gonna do this again so the next line 228 when we go back after we do jump register ra here we go back to 228 according to our a register value in which we store v0 into t1 so t1 now equal to 7 which is basically b if we go back to the you know the function the add for function in the previous slide b is equal to i and j which is 7 now we should call at 2 again to add a and b or 3 and 7 which or t0 and t1 in that case now again add 2 uses a0 and a1 so the argument should be goes to a0 and 1 first that's why in 2 3 2 here we uh, copied t0 to a0 so a0 now becomes uh, uh, t0 which is uh, 3 yes and uh, in line 236 we copy t1 into a1 so uh, a1 now become uh, 7 and then we jump and link so we overwrite our a again and the new value is 244 we go to a 2 now we are adding you know, uh, uh, 7 plus 3, which is basically 10. And we jump back to register our A to 244. In 244, since we ended up and we now V0 contains 10, which is the final value that we should return. Now we need to return to line 20. If we look at, if we go back here just one step, if we look, you know, uh, at RA, RA contains 244, not 20. That's why we should, you know, uh, reread the original value that we stored at the beginning of the program here into RA. And that's why we do this in 244. We read back from the stack pointer the original value of RA. Now RA contains the correct return address, which is 20. And now, of course, we should return, you know, the pointer back to its original value, 1000, is B. And we jump register, you know, uh, to line 20, and in line 20, we move V0 into S0. Okay, guys. That's it for this uh, example, example one of non-leaf procedures. In the, in the future videos, we're going to take more complicated examples. So please study this well before watching the next example. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.